I'm Peter Block in Denver, Colorado at TCT for On the Scene. With me on my left is Steve Ellis from Cleveland Clinic. And Steve uh, has been interested in the bioabsorbable scaffolds, the bioabsorbable stents for a long time. Steve, tell me about these latest trials. Bioabsorbable stents got sort of a bad rap in the last couple of years, but there's ongoing looks at these. Tell me what you're learning. Well, we'll be presenting the three results of Absorb 3 tomorrow. And I, I think suffice to say the results look very similar to they did when they did it at two years. There is a price to be paid early, both in terms of scaffold thrombosis and, uh, and associated myocardial infarction. The curves actually are pretty much parallel between year two and year three, but it doesn't tell us the long-term results, Peter. We, we still don't know what's going to happen afterward. Patients that receive bare metal stents get about a 2% per year rate of adverse events. The average patient who gets a drug eluting stent in the United States lives 17 years. So that's a third of patients have an adverse event related to the metallic stent. Whether or not making the stent goes away or not is a better idea, I don't know. Yeah, but it's interesting, you know, the rates of thrombosis in all of these trials are extraordinarily low. Well, they're, they're, you know, these patients are picked out as low risk. They get probably somewhat better technique or may get better technique during the procedure. They're followed very carefully. Uh, they probably take DAPT a little more carefully than the usual patient. It's a, it's a low risk group of patients, and this is the sort of patients that typically get evaluated early, and we make our clinical judgments based upon them and then extrapolate to everybody else. Well, you know, if you have 0% or 1% versus 1.5% or 2%, that's a tough one to winnow out, isn't it? It is, and I think the current second generation stents are very good, at least in the first few years. It's, it's a, and Zions and some of the other stents have set a very, very high bar to try and exceed. So I guess it boils down to a, the important question, Steve. Are these things going to survive? Are we going to have uh, more bioabsorbable scaffolds to look at, or is the cost and the uh, yeah, investment just too high. Well, the rationale is still there, but the price that Abbott has paid to get to this point has been high, and I, I don't know how industry is going to react. It is a business, after all, this this medical world that we live in. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer for you, Peter. Okay, for now, we still don't know about the bioabsorbable scaffolds, and Steve, who's the expert, says he agrees with that one, so thanks so much for coming right. by. Nice to be with you.